Welcome back to The Red Lettuce. Joining us tonight is John Siebels, the legendary tweeter and guitarist <laughs> of Eve Six, um, who've just released a fantastic EP called Grim Value. Uh, John is a member of the Party for Socialism and Liberation, or the PSL, and is involved in various campaigning or various organizing efforts, which we're going to discuss today. Um, so John, could you please tell us about your work with the United Musicians and Allied Workers campaign and tell us about the relationship they have with Die Jim Crow Records, what that is, um, and tell us about your Spotify justice campaign. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, just to clarify, I am not the one that tweets from Eve 6, so don't hold anything <laughs> Again, you can. I, I only tweet from my my John Siebel's Twitter. So anything else you can hold against Max. Uh, <laughs> although, okay. although I generally uh, hold many of the same positions that he does, um, but uh, he has a much more wild way of of expressing it. Um, but yeah, so uh, the union uh, union of musicians and allied workers, UMA, we say, uh, we started basically right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and the, the 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 first way that kind of everyone came together was a, a petition and over um, uh, unemployment benefits when you know the the self employment uh, unemployment benefits thing was happening and we, and we had a huge petition of a bunch of independent musicians uh, that that you know signed this sort of list of demands and presented it to, to Congress. Um, so that was how the sort of how it sort of started, um, and. Uh, so then a lot of the people that were involved in that kind of came together um, uh, and and were like, you know, there there isn't really a union for for artists. You know, there's there's like other there's other musicians unions, there's local musicians unions and, and you know, uh, AFM and stuff like that. But really, they they represent more like if you're like in a symphony or like a hired musician, you know, um, there's not really something dedicated to like artists and um sort of relating you know being an artist to to labor you know um and and being paid fairly for our labor and and especially once covid hit and everyone's live business dried up um you know it it, it was it was scary for because you know most artists make a majority of their money touring um because you know streaming services don't pay and it's really hard to recoup on record labels if especially in you know major labels and stuff like that and um so that's how it started and and so it's been going uh, you know a, a year plus and um it's really it's really grown we have I, I think we have three locals now chicago la and philly um and um and yeah we've been involved in all kinds of different campaigns I, i'm on like the streaming committee so our biggest focus has been uh pr primarily focused at like spotify but also all this all the streaming platforms and uh you know uh ju the justice at spotify campaign is basically a you know a list of demands uh you know um that that we're trying to get out of Spotify as sort of a base level being, you know, a minimum of one cent per stream. Right now they pay about a third of a cent per stream. Um, uh, you know, full transparency, uh, you know, there are different deals they have with different labels and stuff like that. Transparency of how their money is spent. A lot of different things like that. We've had, I, I don't even know how many artists have signed the campaign at this point, but it's many, many thousands of, you know, especially independent artists. Um, uh, but then there's also, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, other committees. There's, uh, uh, you know, label relations, venue relations. Uh, there's a L uh, LGBTQ uh, committee. There's a, a, um, a police uh, uh, accountability committee. Uh, immigration, like, you know, all, all kinds of different, uh, different things. Um, and so the die, the die Jim Crow thing, uh, came up, uh, through the union. I'm not sure who the original, who connected with them originally, but, um, uh, but basically we've, uh, a, you know, a handful of the artists, uh, that are involved, uh, last year did some like online, uh, concerts to raise, uh, money for them. And bas basically what they are is, uh, the first, record label to put out 
all uh, music by incarcerated or for formerly incarcerated uh, musicians. Um, and so we did a couple of acoustic songs for them last year um, for, for one of their fundraisers and they were doing these kind of streaming events and um, and now they are raising money for uh, to like uh, it's like actually donations and money to to get instruments into prisons um, and uh, they're just really doing some incredible stuff. Um, you know, really, really great support and and the, you know the music that is coming out is is really incredible too. So um, I guess that's a, an overview of <laughs> of Yuma and and Die Jim Crow and uh, yeah, kind of kind of what we're doing. If you if you are a musician who's interested, it's unionofmusicians.org. dot uh, org. You know, just go there, sign up for a you know new member meeting. We have them like once a month or so and. Uh, yeah, it's just been been growing and and we're just always looking looking at what's next, but basically just trying to to you know band together uh, as as artists. But you know, it's I feel like a lot of times it's in music it's sort of um, competitive, you know, uh, between artists and and uh, you know we we have the philosophy that we're we're better you know we're better off together fighting together than against each other you know i love that that that's that's really unique um there's there's so much exploitation in the music industry i, I follow this young woman on twitter uh her handle is i am tiffany red and she mm -hmm. talks a lot about the uh um not only the the exploitation um that songwriters and and producers go through um but also like the, the racism and the, the sexism in the industry and she does a lot of similar work. I, I recommend um, following some of her um, work on Instagram. Um, yeah. And um, so, so my next question about the is, is about you, Ma. Is that like that's for indi like individual indie artists can sign up, and people like on the label can sign up. In, any artists? So yeah. So it's union of musicians and allied workers. So the idea was you know basically anyone who's not a not a boss you know i mean uh, um which you know is it's it's a it's been a little hard sometimes defining that because i guess as a as a as an artist you're sort of a business owner <laughs> you know um but but yeah i mean you know the, the idea is that you know people that are uh you know producers and mixers and uh you know people that work at venues and and uh record labels and stuff like that you know can can also be involved um so you know but and and, and on the artist side of it uh you don't have to be an independent musician it's kind of ended up to be you know a majority of that but um but you know we you know we hope for some you know we, it, it would be nice to get some like you know bigger names involved uh you know i think i think everyone's a little afraid um about the backlash but um yeah. but you know it, at, at a certain point you know that that will uh the dominoes will fall i mean getting blacklisted in the industry is like i yeah. mean i mean look what they did to jojo yeah right and and what britney spears is going through right now i, I think that's i think those those are not isolated incidences i think that's super common um we're wondering if you also have any thoughts on on that um on on britney specifically yeah, or, britney yeah. or like what the like if you think that's like a, a, a bigger industry problem rather than just a britney spears problem um let's see i i mean definitely i think getting blacklisted and you know people are afraid of getting blacklisted from spotify because it's like if you know it, it's like if you don't get on their playlists then you don't get you know tons of streams and everything's about numbers and algorithms and and all this stuff so that's definitely a concern um the britney thing i think is kind of a, a combination thing there's definitely some some industry stuff at play um but I think more than that, it's like it's a. Uh, uh, I, I I I mean I I don't even I don't even know. I mean she's just being totally taken advantage of. It's a it's a sexism thing. It's a um, you know it's a you know a family control issue. Um, 
you know, it's I, I, Max actually the other day, I, I don't I, I can't remember exactly how he said it, but he said something like, you know, it's hard sometimes to to feel bad for someone who's rich, <laughs> you know, um, in, in situations. But it's like the more that comes out about this case, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the more that it's just I mean, she's just uh, being so completely taken advantage of on right. her own on her own dime, you know, and right. Right. just no no ability to make her own decisions. I mean, it's it's really, really disgusting. I mean, I think the, you know, the the legal system comes into play here, obviously, um, you know, a, a lot of different uh, things. I think, you know, sexism being uh, mm -hmm. a big a big part of it, you know. Yeah, I I, I, I think it's interesting because she, she is really rich um, mm -hmm. and she, you know, she does manage a lot of stuff and but in some ways she's not like in some ways she's the boss in some ways she's not the boss right and, and so like as an artist i mean she's being exploited and, and she's clearly not seeing the fruits of her labor right now um yes. so so i so i think that um you know it, it is hard to feel bad for rich people but i i think our view as socialists that everyone should be rich right and i think the average starbucks worker or mcdonald's worker would be really rich <laughs> or really wealthy if they of were course. actually getting paid for the labor that they they produced and i th i think that it's important to try to talk about um to to use like britney spears as a, a device not only to talk about what she's going through but also what the average worker is going through because in a lot of in a lot of ways she is alienated from the what she's producing but uh, yeah and and everyone around her is getting rich mm -hmm. you know her dad being the 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 main one uh and she doesn't even have much control over over how that works uh, over what percentages he gets and you know like they tell her to play shows and they tell her to uh you know <laughs> take medication and and do all these you know uh, all these different programs and i mean she's just it's it's like yeah i mean it's it's like it's they, really they, they control situation. her sexual organs too like when she yep. can, like that that to me was just uh, on top of everything else was just really just just really disgusting and on how like our system can allow such a thing to happen yeah, I mean, that, I mean, absolutely. And and that goes into, you know, the, the, the justice system, I guess, you know, and, uh, you know, as long as you have enough money to, to, to fight something, you know, you can usually <laughs> get what you want. Um, and she's just never, you know, she does have the money. I mean, she's, she's spending her money to fight herself, you know, and that's like that it's I mean, it's absolutely exploitation. There's there's no question about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, we we also noticed that uh, you must support BDS. So can you tell us how these campaigns add to the movement and why uh, artists other other artists should support BDS? Um, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, in in general, <laughs> I, I I mean, BDS is uh, uh, obviously sort of, you know, a loaded, uh, a loaded gun uh, in a lot of ways, in a lot of circles. But, you know, UMA's position is just that we we fight, you know, we fight for the oppressed and and um, uh, and, you know, from an artist standpoint, I mean, there's plenty of Palestinian artists that literally aren't allowed like, are only allowed to play in like one club you know um and uh so you know i think that um we you know we support it because it's the right thing to do um and uh not only from the artist standpoint but just from a humanitarian standpoint you know yeah but um we see that, that there's a lack of support from like other artists in the industry do you think they're afraid to uh speak out about it due to um you know getting removed from their label or blacklisted does that exist yeah i mean i think in general it's you know i i feel like we finally have turned it you know with this you know with this last uprising i feel like we've sort of sort of turned a corner um 
but I, I think just the the classic, you know, conflation of of you know anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism, you know, and and you know that still gets you know gets weaponized against people, and uh, you know I think that it's uh, no matter you know whether you're an artist or you know whatever business you're in or. Uh, you know, if you work in a corporation or or whatever, it, it it you know, I mean, journalists are getting fired over it. I mean, it's it's still, you know, it's still a a, a hot button issue, which doesn't make any sense to me. But um, you know, the 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 lobby is so powerful, and you know, people have just been convinced that to be, uh, you know, against settler colonialism and ethnic cleansing is somehow anti-semitic you know um uh it's, or it's debatable. Cra crazy what's that or even debatable <laughs> right right or even debatable yeah absolutely it's uh uh yeah it's it's absolutely absolutely in, insane to me um and uh yeah free free palestine absolutely absolutely and um i i think we are seeing a turn here in America, especially among the working class. We, like, as you mentioned, we, we did see like hundreds of thousands of people um, come out and support uh, mm -hmm. for Palestine across America. And I think that is, that in and of itself is such a, um, that indicates that the working class here is realizing that imperialism does not benefit them and they don't want it being done in their name because you know our tax dollars funds the uh, apartheid state of Israel, right. and instead of having healthcare or paved roads or infrastructure or schools and clean water, we're we're sending billions of dollars to fund Israel and apartheid state to oppress Palestinians. Right. Uh, so. I, I think I think people are waking up to that here for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was similar, you know, in in the apartheid South Africa era. You know, I mean, it like you know, what was Nelson Mandela was you know listed as a, a a terrorist for years and years until the pressure just got too high, and then all of a sudden, you know, that that changed. And uh, you know, I think that's it's a similar situation. And yeah, like you said, uh, you know, with in, in imperialism, I mean, it's that's sort of their, you know, that's the the United States and and you know the UK originally, but it's the United States like staging ground for imperialism in the Middle East. It it, it stretches far beyond just Palestine, you know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, like the, with the Golan Heights and uh, um, my my good friend Samer always says that Israel is the U.S.'s largest military base. Absolutely. hundred percent, hundred percent. And it's, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the staging ground, you know, uh, for, for the rest of the, the, the of the Middle East. And uh, it's, it's absolutely absurd. Well, John, what, actually, why don't you tell us about your political journey um, and how you became a member of the PSL? Yeah. Um, so, you know, honestly, like it's it hasn't really been till like later in life that I really got, you know, political, I guess. Um, I, you know, I've always been anti-war. I mean, I remember, you know, being in my, you know, early 20s when when the Iraq war started and Afghanistan and stuff. And I mean, I was always vehemently against all of that. Um, so I've always had sort of a uh, you know, I guess at least an anti-war. Um, I don't think I understood imperialism at that point as much as I do now, but, uh, you know, still, you know, anti-war, anti-imperialist sentiments. Um, but, um, you know, I think like a, like a lot of people, you know, I, I started to wake up around 2016, you know, I, I wasn't even that like, um, I wasn't even that involved in the first uh, Bernie Sanders campaign. Um, it was more like after that happened, um, you know, I, I started to kind of be like, what, what, <laughs> what is this? What just happened? You know, and, and then going on to, to Hillary Clinton losing to Donald Trump. It was like, I think at that point, I really started to take a hard look at, at, you know, uh, 
our our political system and politicians and and really analyzing and you know to some degree you know the obama era also you know just watching you know what we thought was going to be change and and hope turn into you know bailouts for banks and um you know uh you know i was never part of like the occupy movement or any of that kind of stuff but still it was like just you know watching what happened you know how many you know other wars and and drone strikes and and you know things that happened during the obama administration that that definitely started to to make me think as well um but yeah it was around probably around 2016 where i really started to like you know get into watching more you know uh you know left independent left media and you know uh listening to other perspectives and following people on twitter that you know were were saying something different um and uh so i think you know during that time i definitely considered my you know started to consider myself a you know a leftist or a progressive or whatever i didn't really fully even know what that entailed i don't think um and then you know after after this last you know primary season it was like you know getting getting involved in you know actually getting involved in the bernie campaign i'm, I'm in austin now but i was in la um uh i moved to austin a couple months ago but um born and raised in la so I was knocking doors and I was making calls and I was doing the whole thing and like really following it close and really understanding the primary, how the primary system works and you know, all that. And after that all went down, I was just like, this is just complete bullshit. You know, yeah. this is not, <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is not oh. democracy. And, and even just, you know, the, the, a, a, a minor, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I think it was around that time when I really started to, to just look at the, you know, uh, at, at the system in general and the, the, you know, the political system we have here, you know, really understanding that, that it's not, you know, left and right means nothing here because it's, it's all, it's all right. And, and, and then, you know, really understanding that, that, that is capitalism, you know, it's like, you can call them Democrats, you can call them Republicans at the end of the day, it's the same thing, you know, I mean, Democrats are like the, you know, the buffer zone to, you know, to allow fascism to continue to, to fester, you know, um, but, um, but yeah, that was the time where I think, you know, after that is when I really started to, to, um, to just wake up to, to, you know, what was going on. Um, and the the way that I got involved in PSL is that I I had become friends with um, with Mike Preisner, who uh, is part of the Empire Files, and um, he had a um, a pot or has a podcast called Eyes Left, and uh, mm -hmm. I had somehow stumbled upon that podcast. I think when something was going on, it was uh, I think maybe when um, uh, when the Iran stuff was happening, um, you know, under Trump and. Uh, and I wanted to hear like, you know, more of like a leftist, like ex, you know, people who, you know, maybe ex-military leftist perspective, basically. And and uh, so I had started listening to his podcast and, uh, you know, of course, Twitter uh, again. But like, at some point, someone had asked about suggestions for 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 that. And uh, and uh, and I had I had tagged you know eyes left and mike was like oh holy shit you listen to our podcast that's crazy and you know i used to listen to eve six when i was you know uh in my early you know whatever late late teens early 20s and we struck up a friendship and you know did some did some bernie stuff together and and uh um and so you know that was how i kind of learned about psl and um you know, at, at a certain point, I think I, I hit this, this, I, I had done enough edu education on my own to where I was like, I was like, I called him up. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm ready. Like I, I want, I want to join PSL. Um, and, uh, so I did and, and it's been incredible. I mean, I, you know, I, I, I think that, um, you know, it's, 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 it's taught me a lot. I mean, one, one thing I really like about PSL is just, their their education you know i mean it's just all about education the, the you know they re, you know really 
um, you know, studying text together and, um, you know, they've got Liberation School and Liberation News and sort of all the offshoots from that. And, um, and you know, it was stuff that I agreed with and, uh, and have learned from. And, you know, I joined like sh shortly be before uh, the uprisings of last summer. So it was like, I mean, I was just, you know, not on tour and just like in the streets every single day, different things. And, um, you know, it was a, it was an insane time to, to join a party. Um, and, uh, so I learned a lot. I learned a lot about, you know, on the ground organizing and, and started to read more. And so I'm still a, I'm still a baby, baby communist, you know, um, definitely don't claim to know everything, but, um, but I, I feel like I've, you know, I've learned a lot in the last couple of years, especially, you know. We, we all come from somewhere, you know, we, we've got to start somewhere. And right. uh, I think w that's one of the hardest parts about being a socialist or a communist is that um, you'll talk to conservatives who have some like anti-social like views, right. like uh, gay people or women or like Jews. And they like, they, they'll say uncomfortable things about that stuff, but. right. Their, their class analysis might be a bit sharper than the average liberal, you know, and it's it's a definitely a weird place to try to like engage with that um, and and try to be friendly for the cause. You know, right, it's, right. It's it's weird sometimes, but I, I find that some of those conversations are actually easier. Um, you know, once once you just say okay this person is coming from a place where they've been fed lie after lie after lie after lie on tv and media like mm -hmm. like, the, like the cia has done their job very well oh yeah and, and um i think it's our duty to accept that that people's economic conditions are important, even if they have some backwards ideas or however you want to phrase that. Um, and, and uh, you know, it, we've got to be, we've got to be welcoming if, if we want to get shit done, right? We've got to accept that somebody might be wrong and be nice to them about it and just, right. you know, like no matter what they've read or what they haven't read, you know, you, like people don't read, Rosa Luxemburg overnight and they just know everything right yeah ab absolutely I mean I think yeah in a lot of ways it's it's meeting people where they're at you know yeah that's exactly um, what it is yeah um yeah. and I find it I find it easier honestly to you know for people that that identify as a you know Republican or a Democrat honestly I I find it easier to to communicate with both just being like oh i'm neither <laughs> you know what i mean like like i'm 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 not a republican i'm not a democrat and so you're you're almost starting from a a, a different place because it's just this natural mm -hmm. instinct in the united states to be like it's you know it's such group mentality like you have to draw a line in the sand and you're either a republican or you're a democrat and i'm like i oh i don't support either corporate party <laughs> you know and and that can make it easier for for talking to everyone and beyond that i you know i think there's a a, a vast majority of of the working class that it, like they're just working so hard they're not they're not up on every s s stupid little thing that's being said on cnn and yes. and and fox and stuff it's like you know so it's like you know really you know organizing and trying to uplift um you know the the disenfranchised is is uh you know even more you know uh rewarding in, in my mind you know yeah and it's also just uh, important to to realize is that you know people aren't born with these backward ideas they're indoctrinated and absolutely this is um this is all coming from a you know bourgeois um media sources and culture and academia this is all coming from that mm -hmm. and it's up to us to change to change that is to get to people um with like what socialism really is and what that could look like in America. And, um, you know, it's, 
we, we have to normalize talking to people that we disagree with that have backward ideas because the only way to change backward thinking is to improve people's material conditions. Right. And that's what everyone will benefit from. And that's what everyone really, really wants. Like the, the, you know, poor, the, the poorest Americans want paved roads. They want jobs. They want wages that actually can, uh, you know, they, they can live on and have mm -hmm. a family. Mm -hmm. um, they want clean water. That's not poisoning their minds and, and their bodies and same yep. with food and, they don't want to be paying 80% of their, their paycheck to rent. <laughs> exactly. Know? And yeah. they don't want, you know, their taxes going to fund these, um, you know, wars abroad mm -hmm. and they want healthcare. They want to see a doctor when they want to, yep. um, you know, they want transportation. They want, you know, all these things that the rest of the industrialized world has. Um, and also what these socialist states have, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like, what once we get to these people, once we get to the, we have to get to them. We we have to get out of the movement to the masses. That's what Caleb Mothman always says too, and he's he's right. And I think if you haven't checked him out, I really think you should. Uh -huh. um, is we got to get to the masses and get out of the movement. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I, move where they're at. I I agree with that, and I think that you know uh, that starts you know with the yeah meeting people where they're at here but also you know really really coming from an anti-imperialist standpoint because i think that nothing nothing will change as long as as we're doing what we're doing around the world um exactly. you know and and i think that you know most people don't even they don't even know i mean the 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 like you say the indoctrination is 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 so fierce that they have they don't they don't know you know they don't they don't know what's going on in haiti they don't know what's what's going on in you know all over the global south and and you know they they and and i think that um you know that like if we have any hope for for becoming a a, a you know a, a true you know socialist country um you know we we have to start with with ending imperialism, ending exploitation around the world, ending oppression around the world. Um, you know, that I, I just don't see any any other way to achieve that without without that happening first. You know, right? Exactly. Because um, because what is what is you know what is free healthcare? <laughs> you know, or 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 what is a quote unquote green new deal if you know we're still exploiting countries for their for their minerals and and you know um uh, you know etc et you know it's like uh, that no, it's, that isn't yes. that isn't yeah. socialism that's that's no. that's oppression you know yeah that's that's this is that's my that's why i'm not a democratic socialist and that's why i'm a communist instead is because right. democratic socialism is like yeah, I get healthcare, but these industries that still own the water in South America, like, still get to profit, you know, like, that's, that's like, it's like what Stalin said, that's like the left wing of fascism, right? And, right. and so, so I have a hard time. And I don't mean to call every democratic socialist a fascist, like, that's not, you know, I'm, I'm trying to avoid doing stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but that's, that is just to explain why I I'm not a democratic socialist. I, right. you know, uh, you know, I think sometimes it's a means to an end. Like I would love healthcare, mm -hmm. but, but I think you're right. Like the, the biggest issue is, is, or one of the biggest, most salient issues is we have to um, expose the contradictions and uh, of imperialist propaganda and remind people that, you know, who's going to die in these wars. It's, it's poor people. It's mm -hmm. the people we're dropping bombs on. It's not like, it's not an, like an unknown ghost enemy that we're fighting. It's, right. it's, you know, everybody understands that these wars are for oil, but they can't, they couldn't tell you why. Right, they, they right. You know, so, so yeah, we, I, I agree with you. Yeah, we've yeah no, and, and we have to, we have to be sure, we have to like, you know, we have to be very clear what imperialism is. Imperialism is, it's not like a policy or like an action or anything. It's it's a it's a global system of underdevel of underdevelopment, mm -hmm. and uh, the United States is the is the center of it. 
Yep. It's, you know, the, we don't have, you know, our enemies are right here. The, the, the center of the empire, the imperialist empire is right here at home. And in order for the, the rest of the world to not be um, underdeveloped, we have to really start changing things here at home. Absolutely. You know, that's why we need to be, the, the, I think that's why people uh, in America, the working class are waking up to that. that they're, they're, we're in this awakening period of that we can't just you know it's we have to be in solidarity with all the other w workers of the world absolutely yeah and, i i oh, oh, sorry go ahead go ahead yeah no no i'm saying because all of our causes and all of our interests are interlinked absolutely and i think yeah. that's what i think people are waking up to that yeah and i think that you know messaging wise it's actually not a bad message to be like okay, we're spending, you know, whatever, over three quarters of a trillion dollars a year on the defense budget, like we could have healthcare for that. I don't think that's a horrible sort of messaging thing, but I don't think it's as simple as that either, you know? Right. Um, so I think that, I think that, that things like that can't, you know, draw, drawing those equivalencies can, can help wake people up to, to certain mm -hmm. things, you know, because, yeah. You know, people don't think about the fact that we have whatever 800, you know, foreign military bases and, you know, uh, uh, you know, and that's just the 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 Pentagon budget, you know, that's right. it's. Oh, that's... my God. OK, so a lot has happened in the in the, in the past week. Mm -hmm. um, the USA covertly pulled out of Afghanistan, uh, but he's still um, I, I we read an article yesterday about how um, they still plan to use private contractors to keep yeah. an eye on the Taliban. And yep. uh, Biden's administration has given rate the on $2 billion to ramp up nuclear capabilities. Um, and, and I mean, we don't mean to be alarmist at all, but this is quite concerning. And, uh, you know, the, the president of Haiti was just assassinated. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot like going on. And it really there's a lot going like, on. America is back with a vengeance, you know, yeah. like, like I, this is. Yeah, this is can blue continue. Magical, you know, like it's, yeah. It's just, so, what what are your thoughts on the current stage of imperialism here with these chess pieces moving? Like, I like, mean, what is going on, John? Uh, wow. I mean, that's a that's a massive question, but <laughs> yeah, but but I think that you know one of the one of the problems is that you know people think of themselves as liberal or left here, you know, because they like you were saying earlier, because they maybe have certain social ideas, you know, that, that you know, are pro-choice or, you know, these, these different sort of hot button issues. And, and meanwhile, both capitalist parties are, are, you know, essentially exactly the same when it comes to, to foreign policy. And, and it's almost worse during, you know, during a democratic control, because, you know, because people just are back to brunch and they're not, they're not thinking about it. You know, the, the mm -hmm. pressure isn't, the pressure isn't on. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, the, the Afghanistan thing, I mean, uh, it definitely worries me because that's exactly the same thing they did when we pulled out of Iraq. You know, it was all government contractors. It wasn't, you know, we didn't, we didn't leave Iraq. We just pulled out our actual official, you know, troops. Um, and then, then we have, you know, whatever, Blackwater and Triple Canopy and all these different contractors running amok. Um, and, you know, it that's almost worse because, uh, you know, it, it's like they don't have to, they don't even have to answer to <laughs> to anyone for, for what they do, you know? That's why I think um, what you said earlier about like, you know, when people say, to, you know, oh, I'm left or I'm right, and you say I'm neither. Yeah. I think that's really important. Like, I, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Like, not classifying my politics as left wing or right wing. I am a communist. I'm a socialist. Right. The, right. the power needs to be so. The power of these decision making processes needs to be socialized. It mm -hmm. needs to be put in the hands of the people. And because because we all know that the majority of the working class is not going to support that shit. You right. know, like they're going to you know that type of foreign policy will be probably you know it, it'll be defeated every single time. And and that's that's why. That's why I, I think it's really important what you said earlier that, you know, I'm not left or right. Like people, people will go, oh, what are you? And then, oh, well, I'm, I'm a socialist. And then I'm a socialist, like, yeah. are you Antifa? And you're like, yeah. you know, like, like you, 
you know, I'm sure well, you know. I am actually <laughs> anti-fascism, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Right, right. But um, I, I think that's that's really great analysis. Yeah, yeah. And I and I usually follow it up by saying I don't support either corporate uh, uh, corporate controlled party, you know, and yeah. it's like I think people go, oh, OK, like, you know, it's like you know they don't think about that they don't think about who's actually in control you know they feel like because they go to the polls and vote every two or four years that that they are in control but uh, they're not they're just voting for another you know uh, another overlord basically to you know to do whatever is in the best interests of the rich and the the corporations and uh you know that's yeah they're, they're unwill they're unwillingly like knowing like not knowing, but they're being like foot soldiers for like, uh, d depending on which faction of the ruling class that they're voting for. Right, right. And they and they divide it up between, like you, like you originally said, these sort of, you know, hot button social, you know, look like domestic social issues, you know, and and beyond that, there is no difference. You know, they're all all, all of these all these politicians are are controlled by the corporations the you know the corporations own the media the media tells you what the, the corporations want you to to believe and it's you know it's it's just we're we're controlled by by the ruling class you know and uh so i think making that distinction of like you know i su i support the people not the not the ruling class you know yeah and i think i think it's just also really telling i i caught this on on twitter uh, I thought this was so egregious. I, I like my my jaw like hit the hit the hit the floor. Like me, while Joe Biden is giving two billion dollars to uh, Raytheon to ramp up nuclear weapons, um, the White House tweeted out a Fourth of July. I don't know if you guys saw this, but they uh, tweeted out like a Fourth of July post about how. Um, uh, Fourth of July barbecue meals or, or or dinners or whatever are down are are sixteen cents less than they were last year. Yeah, in absolutely insane. Um, and you know the the gas to get to the gas station is you know three times as expensive, and you know people are facing eviction and unemployment and everything else. But hey, my burger is you know the there's there's 10 items at the grocery store that are 14 cents less i mean it's it's an absolute joke hey i i have to choose between either turning the lights on or my diabetes medicine but uh here's uh here's 16 cents um, yeah exactly your uh holiday meal exactly it's absolutely absurd and on top of that you know it's like so we gave whatever it is two billion dollars for nuclear weapons to raytheon who, you know, like Lloyd Austin was like a whatever board CEO or whatever. And he's, he on was. he's on the board of directors. He's on the board of directors. Like this, board this of is directors. not a coincidence. Yeah, not like still still a major shareholder. It's like, oh, cool. Well, he got rich because of that, you know, that that decision that is like based on like, you know, quote unquote diplomacy or some some, you know, who knows what they think it's i don't even know what they have pretended to uh to base this one on but i mean the whole thing is just so corrupt it's it's crazy if trump did that shit like we would not hear the ends of this but it's like, especially on like rachel like maddow like, right, like right. We, we won't hear this on like rachel maddow or you know uh what other ones i don't know um whatever these new like people on rising are like yeah, yeah. They were like, we got to get rid of Crystal Ball because she's going to bring it up. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, yeah, that's that 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 whole thing is is crazy to me. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, and a lot of the other issues that like people were so concerned about defeating Trump for like healthcare, canceling student loans and and like a bunch of other stuff like it's just not. Oh, fr thing. freeing Where kids, you know? freeing kids out of cages yeah. that he helped build. Yep. Yep, I mean, and then there's more kids in cages. Like, you like, come on, like, how? Why? Why are we bad guys for saying this? That that Joe Biden is like the same as Donald Trump. Like, right, right, and then Biden, you know, and not to mention just the, you know, anti-China Cold War oh rhetoric. I mean, it's I, I like obviously Trump was doing that stuff with you know with the sanctions and stuff like that. But I think you know even then it was a little more of a financial. Yeah. you know just just 
financial sort of things. Whereas now it's like this full on, you know, we're entering a full on cold war with China. And uh, that's just absolutely absurd to me to, you know, like, uh, I mean, it's, it just, you know, it just makes no sense. I mean, sure, you know, China is not without any fault, but uh, I mean, in general, they've pretty done a pretty damn good job of providing for their people, lifting people yeah. out of poverty, um, you know, modernizing, um, you know, they keeping, uh, eradicated it, they, they eradicated yeah. poverty. Yeah, or at least extreme poverty. I mean, there's right, still poor, right. poor people in China, but extreme poverty has been eradicated. I mean, you know, their technological advances are absolutely insane. Um, and, you know, the, like the, there's just, you know, this is a country that is controlled by its people and, 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 it's, and it's provided for its people. And it's made huge strides, especially from where they were, you know, at the time of the, uh, of the revolution. I mean, to now is absolutely insane what they've, what they've accomplished. It's a night and day difference when you, when you like compare, when you, when you like show the differences between a dictatorship of the proletariat versus a dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. Look, for example, very simple one is, a dictatorship of the proletariat, they eradicated extreme poverty. Over here with the dictatorship of the bourgeoisie, we still got it. And, and it's getting and worse and worse. And it's getting worse yeah. and worse. And they're like, I don't know, like, they're whatever, how many times that the size of population uh, that we are. Right. And yeah. Exactly. A massive, I mean, way, way bigger than us. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's pretty incredible. I think I, I forget what, who it was, but it was, uh, uh, one of the Chinese like uh, diplomats, he, he said, you know, in in the United States, the uh, the parties change, but the policies don't. In in China, the the party doesn't change, but the policies do, uh, depending on what the people need and want. You know, yeah. And uh, that that just makes a lot of sense to me. You know, I agree. That's a really great way to put that. Actually, yeah. I think I think this is a really good place to wrap, guys. What do you think? Sure. I think that's I I think that's great. Yeah. You, you got me going. I could talk for days, but uh, I know, I know, me too. Know. That's how I well, feel well, whenever I, especially with guys like you, I could like, I feel like we can just like shoot the shit for hours. hours. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, let's, uh, let's keep in contact and do more in the future. And, you know, we'll, uh, y- y'all are in Chicago, right? Yeah. Cool. Well, next time I'm, uh, you know, next time we play a show or whatever, you should come hang out. And Oh my God. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I'm That's actually oh my God. in Austin in a couple of uh, weeks. You're moving where? I'll be in Austin in a couple of weeks to visit. Oh, hit, hit me up. I'm gone towards the end of the month, but um, hit me up. Okay. I want to go. Drop, I've drop never been there. It's good. It's, it's an interesting city. I've uh, been here, I guess, a couple months now. And um, I, uh, my, my partner lives here, and we were back and forth for long distance for two years. And we... Uh, Finally, uh, I finally took the plunge towards the beginning of the year, and uh, it's very different from LA, but uh, I'm I, I like it so far. It's 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 a good city. Yeah. I'm gonna stand the south. <laughs> Don't write yeah. yourself off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's crazy. There's not you know, the the left uh, is not super strong here, even though it's you know whatever the more progressive city in Texas, but. Um, but it's uh, it's definitely growing, and uh, it's 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 a good place to be. Um, just a just a side note, um, mm-hmm. if I could tangent for a second, I discovered mm-hmm. this book that I really want to read because um, I've I've been thinking a lot about like um, like the South and um, and we've been thinking a lot about the history of of communist organizing in this country. There mm-hmm. is there is a, a tradition. Of, of that here, absolutely. But, um, in in Alabama, like like Rosa Parks was not a member of the Communist Party, um, but she did attend their meetings with her husband, and mm-hmm. they like they did a lot of work. Um, the 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 Communist Party did a lot yep. of work for racial justice. Um, that Rosa Parks was was um, like received training under and stuff. I, it's in this in this book called Hammer and Ho, Alabama oh, yeah. Communists uh, during, oh gosh, now I can't remember. Um, anyway, anyway, but there's there's a history, communists are in the South, um, mm-hmm. and uh, 
keep up that work because yeah yeah i'm gonna read that book too i've i've heard about that but i've never read it um i i, I have a book recommendation actually not just a book but just like a, a figure to look into is william z foster okay he is an amazing american communist he was a um a candidate for um he was on the ticket i i highly recommend his work especially okay. with um he has a book on the history of the communist party of the united states so okay like, he talks w. about how the whole communist party came to be yeah interesting all right his, his name is james w ford and oh, james w ford james okay w. vice presidential candidate on the communist party like gotcha three or four times uh-huh yeah really good but um uh, but before we actually r wrap uh why don't you tell people where they can find you and the uh the organization that you're with yeah, yeah. So I'm just on Twitter at, at John Siebels. Uh, you, it's J-O-N-S-I-E-B-E-L-S. -E -E um, but you can Google my name or something and find me. Um, uh, Twitter, you know, Twitter at Eve6, Instagram at Eve6. That's all all the music stuff. Um, unionofmusicians.org um, for, uh, for the union stuff. Um, uh, you know, uh, PSL web liberation liberation school and liberation news.org um, but uh, yeah tw Twitter is probably where I'm the most personally active so if you want if you want to interact hit me up on Twitter absolutely we, uh, we love your Twitter um actually I just remembered I forgot to ask this uh, earlier but it there seems to be a blackout of your EP no a blackout it, it, is there like a blackout of it there's no. I read that there was like some some something one of you posted about like. Some oh stuff. yeah, there Max. Uh, there was there was a little uh, there was a little back and forth from some uh, from from some, from some Spotify employees. Um, but uh, oh. there there is a there is an understanding. We did, we did not get blacklisted from uh, from Spotify. Um, uh, I'm surprised at this point, uh, especially with, uh, you know, with the way Max, uh, tweets and puts it, but, uh, <laughs> uh, luckily there has not been a blackout. We actually got a few playlists on the EP. You can check out the EP at grimvalue.com. The name of the EP is grim value. Um, it's like me and Max just like taking it, like we did everything on our own. We, we, we produced it, recorded it, mixed it, like literally everything, like taking it back to sort of our our roots of what we grew up on sort of, you know, eighties, like, early nineties, like pop punk, you know, like true yeah. pop punk. And, uh, so we're just at that point where we're, we, we kind of don't give a fuck and we just want to make the music we want to make. And we, and, and we're having like so much fun doing it and no one's telling us what to do. And, and, uh, uh, it's, it's super inspiring. And like, you know, there's definitely like, hundreds of people listening to it so we're we're, we're totally happy about that <laughs> we highly recommend you to go check it out <laughs>